Good morning, our mothers and fathers, our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we will come you to this special Eucharistic celebration for our dear graduates. As you can see, they look amazing. So we are celebrating our mass today under the theme Reassurance of hope, strength, and victory in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know that without Christ, we can do nothing, and our source of strength is He alone. And so, even in the midst of the COVID pandemic, in the midst of the so many closures that we had, we are reassured that we have got victory in Christ. And so, we celebrate today because he has seen us through this amazing journey. Our main celebrant today is Father Collins Monga. Welcome, Father. So, our readings for today, the first reading will be taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 6. And it will be by my sister, Maria Goret Katulushi. The second reading will be coming from the book of uh, St. Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. And it will be read by my sister, Musopa Kole. The Gospel will be from the Gospel of John, John chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 9. So now turn to your neighbor and just tell them, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thank you very much. Hope you relax, enjoy, and uh, we'll show you the read to a style. So be reminded to take care of your belongings and uh, kindly switch off your phones or put them on silent and please observe the COVID guidelines. Thank you very much. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. What a great day that has enabled us to be here together as children of God. Because we are people of faith, everything that is great in us, we subject it the celebration in faith. And so this is the reason of this Eucharistic celebration. Thank you so much to all the organizers who want to join the graduating students in thanking God who has brought them thus far. They have gone through a lot for them to stand here today. They have a lot of testimonies to give. There are some along the way who almost gave up there are some people that at some point did not believe in them, that they are going to make the mark. But the God, being God, here they are today standing before all of us. And so it is with great joy and heart of celebration that we offer this Eucharistic Mass. My dear brothers and sisters, before we dive into this celebration, 
Let us humble ourselves and ask God to forgive us our sins. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We now, in celebration, sing the glory to God in the highest. Oh, yeah, baby. 
Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faith will offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
reading from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 6. But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your nations, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give up, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, 
do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. <clears throat> the weight of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The response to today's psalm is, I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O oh, Lord, my rock, my fortress, my savior. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock, where I take refuge. My shield, my saving strength, my stronghold. I cry out, praise be the Lord. And I see, I am saved from my fault. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his king and shows merciful love for his anointed. I love you, Lord. The second reading. A reading from St. Paul to the Romans. Romans 5, verse 1 to 6. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in the sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, Christ died, you see, at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Reading from the Gospel of John chapter 5. Verses 1 to 9. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, 
And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem at a ship gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these porticos lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is teared up. While I'm on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat and walked. This is the gospel, the good news of the Lord. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made for us to come together to rejoice and celebrate. Before I go into my preaching, I recognize the, the guest of honor. I didn't know she's the one who was coming here, Dr. Jacqueline Mulondika. Now, always we fight with the pronunciation, Jacqueline. I don't know how she wants me to, to pronounce it. Usually we fight, she wants to remind me. But uh, I'll pronounce it the way I want, Dr. Jacqueline Mulondika. <laughs> she is my sister, she's my friend and my colleague, all those things together. We serve together on one of the boards. I am her board chair, by the way, and she's my board treasure. This should be made clear, doctor. I am the board chair. <laughs> yeah, so glad to see you. Thank you for coming to grace this occasion. My dear friends, we gather here. Our celebration, our purpose of gathering is very simple and straightforward. We gather for three things. Number one, we are here with hearts of gratitude. We have gathered here for nothing else but to say thank you, Lord. But we are also gathered here, secondly, to be alive to the present happenings, to be active and alive to what is happening today. Number three, we are gathered here to reflect and anticipate the future with great hope. Three things. We are here with hearts of gratitude, that is when we look at the past. We look at the past with gratitude. We want to live the present with determination and we want to anticipate the future with hope. These are the three things that uh, summarize the purpose of our gathering. This Mass is in honor of the graduating students. After hard work for many years, seven years for some, five years for others, and the other years for others, only God knows. <laughs> but we are here to be grateful to God. We are here to say thank you, dear Lord, because when we were going through these years, we were not alone. 
that you were with us, you guided us, you governed us, and you protected us. Without the hand of the Lord, we would have not been here proper. Now, I said this mass is in honor of the graduating students. The students that are gathered here, you know what the word graduates mean. I'm very sure. I will not subject you to an exam. You have too many exams already. But I know that you know what the word graduate means. It is a word that is borrowed in Latin. In Latin, there's a word graduare, which translates into English as a step, making a step in life. So these, our brothers and sisters who are graduating actually, are making a step in their lives. They are moving from one stage of life to another stage in life. our brothers and sisters who are making another step in their lives. That after this ceremony, for those that are still writing exams, after their exams, when they go out of this place, they will no longer be at the same level. My friends, life has levels. We should not run out from that. Life has got levels. You move from one level to the other level. And these, our brothers and sisters, are just moving to another level of life. And we should, I mean, we should not beat about the bush. We should not beat about the bush. After spending all these years here being subjected to very harsh moments and harsh times during the exam, you think they will still be the same? No. Ah, well. You know, sometimes I tell people in life when I meet some people, even other priests, I tell them, that we are in Ghana. We are not the same. Amen. Amen. No, it's not about it's not being proud or beautiful, but if facts must be put as they as as, as they are. Yes. Life has levels. We cannot run away from that. Yes. That's why when these are making a step in life, they also stand in as an inspiration to those that are coming behind. Yes. That if you want to make a step to come to where I am, you really have to apply yourself. You have to apply yourself. There are many factors that made these our friends to see this day. To see the dawn of this day. Right now we are living in the new dawn. So everything, every language, language is dawn. Everything is about dawn. So for these who are graduating today, for them to reach where they are, there are a lot of things that they put together that made them see this day. Without some of those things, they would have not seen this day. And I want to reflect with you some of those things that have made these our brothers and sisters to see this day. Number one, it was their commitment to study. You think without the commitment you can, you can get a degree? Degree is angameno ya mukanwa. It doesn't happen just like that. You really have to work hard. And this is the message that they are sending. These who are here, it is because of the effort that they put in at a personal level. But number two, the other thing we cannot forget is the support that they received from their friends. And even when they are there together, I know that many times they spent having study groups. 
where they were encouraging each other. But even those that are not at the same level of their academics, just to encourage them. I <coughs> we know that you are going to make it. Just that is the word of encouragement. So those people, those friends, don't forget them. When you are making this step in life, don't forget those that encouraged you. Don't forget those that exhorted you. Number three, here on the other side of the tent, I'm sure, we have got our parents. We have our parents, our guardians, our sponsors, our benefactors. Sponsors, eh? The sponsors in brackets. They are all here. People who really sacrificed to say to it that uh, you were able to meet the requirements of this uh, institution. When you are asked to pay fees and all that, they were there. These people, please don't forget them. Sometimes, you know, we curse ourselves in life when we forget such people, we forget our parents. When things are going well in life, you forget. Do not forget people that helped you to be where you are today. It was out of sacrifice. They would have done something with their money, but they realized that you needed help. And so they had to sacrifice. They had to forego certain leisures of life. And because of that, you have seen the dawn of this day. But also, we cannot forget. One of the things that made you, the graduating students, to see this dawn of the day is the hard work done by your teachers from primary school your teachers in secondary schools, and your lecturers, your professors in this institution, some of them went out of their way to give you an extra tuition for free so that you understand certain concepts and principles. Don't forget those people. I hope some of the lecturers are here. I hope some of the people that taught you at some stage are here. Please don't forget those people. But above all, don't forget God in your life. Do not forget God. Without God, we are nothing. That's what St. Paul tells us. Without God, we are nothing. God has seen you through out of his enduring love. This is what we heard in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah. God loves you so much that he's not ready to give up on you. Even when you do something that does not please him, God still loves you. My dear sisters and brothers, you who are graduating, when you are leaving this institution, remember where you are going. God loves you and the love of God endures in your life. So no matter what position you are going to occupy in society, always remember God. Because without God, you wouldn't have been here. In So remember. The God that has seen you through is also exhorting you today. Fear not, my child. Fear not. I know some of you, even if you are graduating, you are very worried about employment. <laughs> eh? Are we going to find employment after this celebration? Are we? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you are among the 11,000. Ah, you people are blessed. You are indeed blessed. So at least your worries have been reduced. Eh? The, the, the worries have been reduced. We thank God. But if some of you still may have other worries of life and all that. Remember, God says, don't worry. You are going to, fall, to, to pass through the fires. You will not be burnt. The, the, the fires shall not consume you. Because God is always there to journey with you. God is there to protect you. You pass through the rivers. You will not be overwhelmed. You'll be able to, to swim through the currents of life. This is the God we are praying to this morning. The God that we are saying thank you to. And as we are saying thank you, we are encouraging God to continue protecting and guiding us. 
the way he did in the past, the way he's doing today, may he do it in the future to come. And so if we go into the future with God, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing at all to fear. But the only way that we are going to understand and appreciate this love of God, we must carry faith in our hearts. We must have hearts of faith. For people that have not, no faith, even the word of saying God loves you does not make sense to their ears. The word of God loving you only makes sense to a heart that is full of faith. Hold on to your faith. Never lose that faith. This is my word of encouragement. Because St. Paul today, in his letter to the Romans, said, it is this faith that we embrace in our God that brings us joy of life. That faith brings joy in our lives. Because of faith, God brings us into places of privilege where we are not supposed to be sometimes. Even this day that we have come to, some of us, if you look at yourself, you really do not deserve this day. Some of you don't even deserve to graduate. But God has graduated you. Amen. God has graduated you. We owe it to God. I was very happy when I saw these students joining Babu Womba coming to dance there. This was very beautiful. Some of you even know the steps. You know the dance well. But the problem is when you graduate, where do you go? Why don't you join Womba? <laughs> yeah? Why don't you join the Womba and dance? Because God has given you that gift of dancing. You were dancing so well. Yeah? But I want to be in Womba. I want to be in Womba. I want to graduate. I want to graduate. I want to graduate. Dance for your God because you owe it to Him. So, you student, I go back to the graduation word. As you are making this step in life, you are going into another avenue of life. You are being ushered, you are being initiated into society. This society where you are going, go and make a difference. Go there and make a difference. Don't just be like those that are already in society. Don't go and join what they are already doing. You are unique. You are special in your own right. You may find your seniors there. People that are going to show you the ropes in your profession. But at the end of the day, you are you. You will not exercise your, 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 your doctorate based on those people that have oriented you. At the end of the day, you have to chart your own way. The society you are going into is looking forward to people that are going to be principled in life. That when you are employed, whatever you are employed, you'll be an employee of principle. Don't just join the vices that you are going to find in whatever place you are going to be placed in. But always remember, let the conscious always remind you how different and how unique you are into the whole system, in the whole society. Otherwise, why graduate people who go into society and not make a difference? Why? We are looking forward to you people. We have a lot of hope in you. We have a lot of anticipation. And for me, I challenge graduating students. When you are graduating, thank God the budget is talking about the employing 11,000 class and the, is it 30,000 teachers. But for me, I discourage graduates from going to queue up looking for employment. When you are a graduate and have made this step in life, go and create employment. Don't look for employment because society will never employ you. Even this government cannot manage to employ all of you graduates. But you go out there and begin to create employment so that those that are not at your level, you be able to employ them and help them and empower them in life. This is very possible. As you go out, remember one another. Sometimes form up these groups where you can work together. I come from the background of entrepreneurship myself. I'm a student of entrepreneurship. Apart from being a priest, I'm a student of entrepreneurship. And I strongly believe entrepreneurship is the way to go. That is the way to go. You become your own boss. You begin to define your own way in how you want things to be done. When I said that, I'm, I'm, I'm in the board with Dr. 
Jacqueline, this is what we are trying to endeavor, the organization that we are in. Zambia Cooperative Union Society. That is our... Eh? Yes, I, I even forget the, the, the terminology. However, I am the board chair. <laughs> yes. So that, that, that is what we are advocating for. We are trying to help people empower themselves by forming up groups where they work together because it becomes very easy to access funding when you work as a group as opposed to when you are an individual. So those cooperatives, we say that there is power in cooperative. Actually, a cooperative, in principle, when you look at it, it is a very, very Christian concept. A cooperative is a Christian concept. When you read in Acts chapter 2 or Acts chapter 4, you realize how the early Christians prospered. They prospered because they came together. What they had, they put together, and none of them claimed that it belonged to them. And as a result, they prospered, they were successful. And for me, this is a challenge that I'm throwing at you, graduates, those that are living today. Go and begin to do a few things here. And even when you go into informal, into formal employment, have spare time where you can begin to do your own things with others, of course. You never know how many lives you are going to touch. We are told today in the gospel reading, Jesus going into Jerusalem when he's entering the ship gate, and it is well defined the place where sick people reside. You are the people that are going to attend to those who are sick. Did you know that your clients are patients? You, Patients are your client number one. And like the way Jesus attended to them, this is the challenge. You go to work in your discipline, you are simply participating in the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Be a minister in that discipline. There are many people that are sick out there. People that are lame out there. You spent all these years to be of help to such people in society. Take this day of graduation, take your profession as a vocation. You know what a vocation is? A vocation is an opportunity that God gives us in order to serve him and save our fellow human beings. So you take this discipline into society with that mentality that God has given you an opportunity to go and heal the sick world. Many of us are sick out there. Come into society, please help us get healed. Either we are physically sick, we are biologically sick, we are mentally sick, even emotionally we are sick. But it is your duty, all of you that are going out into society today, that you become the beacon of hope to such people that you are going to meet. And I can assure you, society will never be in short supply of people that are sick. You have them every time. Jesus told us in the scriptures, you will have these people all the time. Go there and make a difference. Don't become a profession in strikes. Every time, by making strike, you have number one. Don't become a profession. Your profession is to heal people. Sometimes you heal them with sacrifice. Like we reminded you that your graduating is because some people sacrifice. So when you go also, go and sacrifice something about your life, of course. So thank you so much to all of you, the parents that have come to witness. This is very encouraging. When your children, when your, your, your nephews and nieces see you on a day like this, they get so encouraged, they are very happy in their hearts. That so there are people that count them out there. And I can assure you, they will remember you. We don't know who is who in the future. You have paid for them today. Wait for tomorrow. The members are very intelligent. Their time is coming when they will also take care of you. Your help to these children is not in vain. It is like you are investing. Of course, you did it out of love out of duty, out of responsibility. But at the end of the day, any responsibility has its own reward. Your reward will someday come. But I beg you, please, don't force it on them. No, because that is very wrong. Let them make their own decision. And they are going to bless you. So, to those that are coming behind, how does it feel? How does it feel seeing others graduating? You are motivated, okay? Yes. So you have a lot of hope. If they can manage, then I can also do it. Yes. It's only a matter of time. 
it's not only a matter of time. It is their day today. Our day is coming tomorrow. And that is the message that we have. Only work very hard. Work hard, commit yourselves. Nothing is impossible in this life. So I want to pray for each of one of you gathered here. May God bless you. May he grant you his own blessings and graces. May you all be fruitful and successful in your endeavors, especially those that are graduating today. Above all, may God bless his word. Amen. So shall we rise now and profess our faith? Then those afterwards, those that have prepared petitions, we can prepare ourselves. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, was substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, having been nourished by the life-giving word of God, let us now, with our hearts full of faith, come before the Lord and present our petitions. Nati pepe, mwele sa wesu, tuwa tote la pati bubu shiku mwatu pela, tuwa tote la naba fiashi, naba nesu, abe shite kudi bubu shiku, mingaba nabe na bubu shose, nesa tukutu mwene. Na tulombe, wemfu mwele sa wesu, tuwa kutasha, tuwa kulumba, pami akayo watifunga masa mjilo yesu. Tuwa kulomba ukuti, upale bonze, hawa tuwa fuwako, ukuchilapo hawa fiashi besu, wakafundi shabesu, ifu busa fiesu na bonze, uingatu mfuwa wemfu. Let us pray. It is not by our might, nor by power, that we have made it this far, but that by the Spirit of Lord, just as you have been with us through this journey, be with us even in the life that awaits us after graduation. Lord, hear us. Na kulomba wa sinawa asbana tukwana kute nikire nga kwa kutanga chetu tatangwe tuwa kiswe kutikiswe na kutubia nikosu na kucha mwishina na kutubia 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 Praying to you for our sake. Bless our parents for all their teachings. Bless them for all they taught us how to love you. For all the times that they strengthened us in our times of witness. Lord, hear us. 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 Lord, h
Mwambu Mulimu ndake ya shemo Waitumela kwa kufa mada Haku fitana koye Mwaitu toza luna Kwa kupakuli Kulu etelele Mwamisebezi yelukana Mulena kulu utu Oda wanabi mpada Listen to the prayers that we present before you in this Eucharistic celebration. There are other prayers that are lying deep down our hearts that go unexpressed. So all these prayers, the unexpressed and those we have expressed, we pray that you may grant them through Christ our Lord. So first is the guest, our fellow students, and then the guardians who come in with the Vawomba. Thank you.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O oh Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your way through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, 
Make holy therefore these gifts with prayer by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Check this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Check this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that protecting of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Our person also we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be as eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. O glory and honor is yours, O mighty Father, forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done in heaven. Give us the sin of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us the sin of our trespasses, and deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Get us to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, Peace, I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we invited to the supper of the Lamb. I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. we are going to receive, we start with the graduating students. Only for the graduating students we are going to receive under both species. When I give you the Eucharist, you come here, you do the intention, if you just here, then you go like this. Only the graduating students. Then we have two points for receiving communion. Brother will be standing somewhere there. Then the rest will find our way just after the graduating students. I'm sure the last to receive is the choir. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
People into the office. People were trying to pretend. Hey, Papa, be careful. <laughs> Let us pray. May the working of your power, O oh Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. This is such an emotional uh, experience. <laughs> Can you imagine now if the master of ceremony is crying? What are our others feeling? <laughs> the joy is too much. Shall we please clap for ourselves here? Indeed, God is in our midst. We thank God. Amen. Okay, so at this point, we're going to have Thanksgiving. We will dance. This is the part also when we will call out our guests, our parents. Please feel free to join us on the dancing floor. And then after Thanksgiving, Father, we're asking if you may anoint the graduating students. So graduating students, after Thanksgiving, we will have to form up. Amen? Amen. Okay, thank you.
So we now offer a prayer to bless the graduating students. Let us pray. Baba parwa babya bamushilo abana benu Baba parwa babya bamushilo abana benu Baba parwa babya bamushilo abana May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and give you grace for the days of your life. May you always be fruitful and successful in your endeavors. May God create a way to success. We come against all the forces that may want to stop you along the way. But you realize always that in the spirit of God, you are more than conquerors. May God now be with you. May, may he watch over you. May he bless you. May he bless all the people that are near and dear to you. But above all, may God bless your future. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> God is good all the time. And all the time, all God the is good and that's his nature. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wow. 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 Our guests are quiet. Let's show them how we do it again. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good and that's his nature. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wow. Okay, okay, great. So at this point in time, we'll have the announcements. Uh, the person making announcements, please be
be ready. Following, we're going to have a chairperson of the Catholic community of Ridgeway Campus, Sir Jonathan. That will be followed by the chairperson of the graduating committee. Lastly, we'll have our guest of honor, Dr. Molendika, to give us uh, a speech as well. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Chair. Please join me in thanking the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for this glorious celebration. We'd also like to pass our thanks to our parents, all our guardians, our brothers, our sisters, and all our friends for being here and for all the help you've rendered. And significant others, sorry. <laughs> Then I would also like to pass my gratitude to the beautiful choir. <laughs> Special thanks also go to our main celebrant and our mass servers. <laughs> then I would also like to specially thank Mabomba for making us, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, graduating students, thanks to you as well for availing yourselves to make this event a success. <laughs> Lastly, but not least, I would like to thank each and every one of our fellow students for being here today. Thank you. So, announcements for the week as follows. <laughs> Usual meetings for the week. So, the choir continues to meet on Wednesday at 17.30 hours in front of the cafeteria, as well as on Saturday at 16 hours at EH4. Then Charismatics as well will be meeting at 16 hours in EH4, and they have their meetings every Sunday, so new members are most welcome. Bible study. <laughs> we continue to have our Bible study meetings every Thursday at 18 hours in LT1. Please find time to join us. At this particular juncture, I would like to call our outgoing chairperson, Chair Jonathan Soko, to come and give us his speech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, let's do it the right way. I will let someone say you try it this way. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. So, good afternoon, dear friends in Christ Jesus. Good afternoon, dear. Before I get into anything, I want to say thank you to the incoming chairperson for giving me this opportunity to stand in for him. Chair Chazulu, thank you. So, I hope we all had uh, a wonderful Euchar Eucharistic celebration, because I did. And I still feel we can uh, go back to the, the beginning. So that we... <laughs> okay. So before I share with you a few of my thoughts today, allow me to recognize the presence of the following people and also offer some gratitude. The guest of honor, I hope I'll pronounce your name correctly, <laughs> Dr. Jacqueline Urundika Luanda. First Zambian female surgeon. <laughs> so, female is today. Thank you so much, Doctor, for 
gracing us with your presence during this uh, celebration. Uh, the main celebrant, Reverend Father Collins Monga, the parish priest of St. Morris Parish, McKinney. You are now in <laughs> All right, many thanks to you, Father, for accepting the responsibility to preside over today's uh, commissioning and graduation mass. Thank you so much. I would also want to uh, honor the presence of our Brother Augustine. Brother Augustine, thank you so much for celebrating mass with us. The Ridgeway Campus Catholic Community incoming chairperson, Mr. Kanai Zulu, former Ridgeway Catholic Community chairpersons. I've seen Chair Kone is in our midst. Chair Cornelia Simsonga, Chair Chewe uh, Divine Chris. Divine Chris. All government officials here present, the giants on whose shoulders we stand to see far in our careers, our lecturers, from various departments and schools, we honor you all. Mrs. Singutu, for the unending support you continually render to this community, we are so grateful. All the alumni from uh, this community present here today, our dear parents and guardians, siblings and friends, we honor you. May I simply say, all protocols observed. Today, we celebrate and give thanks to God for this 10th commissioning and graduation mass in the history of Ridgeway Campus Catholic Community. This reflects the fact that we have continued to grow in our Catholic faith Distinguished guests, the end of the matter is better than the beginning. And today marks the beginning of another phase of life for our graduates, as Father uh, earlier mentioned. Soon, they will be in positions that they have dreamed of from a very tender age. So to you, our graduates, whom we are gathered here to celebrate, it is very imperative that we acknowledge the services that you have rendered towards uh, the community and this campus at large. Today, we remember the time you have sacrificed just to ensure that the community runs smoothly. As you go into society, as graduates, of course, from the mighty University of Zambia Ridgeway Campus, I think the toughest school here in Zambia, maybe in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> remember that we will never never forget and recover from the impact that you have brought into our lives you are leaving this place to face the challenges for which you have been trained for head on may you never forget that the people you discharge your duties to may be going through different issues and fighting various battles in your goal to prevent and treat disease Remember that knowledge and experience alone are not enough. Therefore, add an extra ingredient of love and compassion for the sick by Christ be. <clears throat> May God guide you in your execution of service so that any ailing person that meets you gets to be transformed permanently. Furthermore, always have it in your heart of hearts that you are a Christian who is a graduate. I'm sure someone will finish that for me. Not a, not a graduate who is a Christian. This implies that everything you do should be within the context of God's love towards humanity. Therefore, go out there and be the change that people have been praying for and let people see Jesus Christ in you. Forget not the habit of congregating with other Christians in fellowship and prayer. May you run and never fail. May you run and never fall. May you walk and never get weary. And may the fire on you never be quenched. It is true. Yes, it is true. You came to Ridgeway as just raw materials. And you are living today as well refined gold. You came in as individuals and you are living as a family. 
we will greatly miss the interactions we have had, the knowledge you shared with us, and most importantly, the irreplaceable life lessons we have learned from you this far. As you go out, out there, kindly do not forget this great community. You understand our challenges and our joy is better. Do not forget this community and know that more lives are coming to be impacted in one way or the other. To our parents and guardians present here, thank you so much for your support financially, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and name it, in making sure that our friends today become graduates of the University of Zambia. God bless you. Uh, I'll borrow Father's words again to our sponsors on my left. <laughs> to our sponsors. Guests of honor, distinguished guests present, ladies and gentlemen. As you may be aware, our community does not receive any external financial support, and so it is up to you and I to play active roles in alleviating the, the burdens that are being faced by the community. These range from a lack of enough seats for our Sunday masses. I should mention to you that we only have about 50 chairs for over 100 students. So it's a very big challenge for us. There is lack of proper inst instruments for our choir. It's a beautiful choir, but if added with mics, I'm sure you would have uh, had good quality sound. So we appeal to you on that note. Also, a lack of financial capacity to assist some of our students that may need financial help as far as registration and tuition fees are concerned. Therefore, any assistance in any form that can supplement the efforts of this great community to save more lives, more efficiently and more stress-free will be greatly appreciated and will go a long way. <coughs> to those of us students who are remaining, this is a call to avail ourselves and actively participate in the activities of this great community to offer assistance to the new students coming next year and, and to be custodians of the principles of love, compassion, kindness, and hard work. In conclusion, allow me to uh, call upon St. Francis of Assisi as we pray, Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us all love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, and may the good Lord bless you. My next duty right now would be to call upon the chairperson of the graduating students committee, but I'm already standing here. <laughs> <laughs> On a regular day, I'm a woman of very many words, but today I will not. <laughs> I think we've, I know we've enjoyed this mass, but um, yes, I'm sure we are all tired and we want something to eat and drink and yes. So I'll keep this as short as possible. The guest of honor, Dr. Molundika, our main celebrant, Father Monga, distinguished invited guests, all protocol observed, or should I simply say, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great honor and privilege that I stand here on behalf of my fellow 
2021 graduates of Ridgeway Catholic Community. I would like to thank you all for finding time to come and be with us today, as we thank God for seeing us through our years of study at Ridgeway Campus. Our journey through Ridgeway has not been smooth. As my fellow graduates can attest, we have cried, we've laughed, we've drunk ourselves to sleep, we've almost given up, and also bearing in mind the unanticipated COVID-19 closures that made our stay longer and harder and more frustrating than anticipated. But we feel this could have been God's plan for us to be more mature and stronger as we execute our work in our various health disciplines. I will fail in my duty if I do not thank all those that played a role in the success of this occasion. We had well wishers, including you, our parents, our brothers, sisters, significant others, and friends who helped us in one way or the other, materially or financially, to see us through the smooth organization of this very important Thanksgiving Mass. To you all our partners, thank you so much for the kind works, and please do not stop here. As we leave our second home, Ridgeway Campus, into an unknown world, we know our guidance and protection comes from God. And we would like to make our humble appeal to you all to help us transition into the next phase of our lives. With these few words, I would like to conclude by once again extending my gratitude on behalf of my fellow graduates to you all for your love and support. Thank you so much, and may God richly bless you. Thank you. Emma Chairs are buying. Not for your summer speeches. So to our parents, if you see the, uh, in the next few years as ministers of health, commerce, tourism, I think we will create another ministry of uh, cosmetics and uh, intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God is good, amen? Amen. At this point, may we please welcome uh, the guest of honor, Dr. Willard Gatt, to come and give us a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You can hear me? You can have me hear myself. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. I'll say my name. <laughs> yes. My name is the French version of my name. So it is really Jacqueline. <laughs> but I let all the other versions pass. <laughs> so I'm um, Dr. Jacqueline Molundika Mulwanda. Yes, I am the first female Zambian surgeon. And uh, I just want to tell you when I graduated, because I think you were not born. <laughs> I graduated in 1989. Yay! From this very school. Yeah. And I lived, in third year, we were 13 girls. So A block would only take 12. So I lived in B, I can't remember, B13, I think, the last small room at the end, which was not really a room. 
But since I was a junior and everyone else was seniors, I was put in that room. And then from there, I moved to Annex. I don't know if it still exists. It's in the middle there, next to C Block. Yeah, until I left. So I'd like to thank you very much for asking me to be part of this great Thanksgiving Mass. It's been good. And I'm very happy to see that you have put God first. Huh? Before we belong to anybody else, we belong to God. Our parents are co-creators with God. God creates us and needs assistance, but we belong to him. But I want to concommission that this should not be an academic exercise. Hmm? A graduation, mass, whoa, whoa, whoa. Then after that, you forget that God brought you this far. So let it continue. Continue putting God first, and you will succeed in life. School was just a stepping stone to achieve what God has called you to do. That is serving him. And we serve him, this profession, by serving others in a very special way, which borders between life and death. And this includes all of us, the doctor, the nurse, the physiotherapists, the pharmacists, the biomedical scientists you're called, through that, the geographer. We are all part of this service because we all need to put in our knowledge to give the best service to the patient who is at the center of our service. <clears throat> and God has given you a ground to create teams even before you get into the <clears throat> hospitals or wherever you work. So take advantage of this. Be a team player all the time. A doctor cannot work on their own. A nurse cannot work on their own. And so the rest of the uh, professions. So be able to pick up that phone. Do not make the patient wait because you have sent the porter to the lab with a specimen. Hmm? Meanwhile, you need that result for you to go a little further. And the patient needs an x-ray. I'm talking from experience. And you send the water to x-ray. No, then they come back. No, then they will come back. You're going to find this in the system. I've been in the system over 30 years. So you have that advantage to be able to pick up the phone. Call that pharmacist. Do you have this drug? Before you write that prescription and send the poor patient and their relatives to the pharmacist, just to be told, uh, if you've got it, baby, just go and buy. That is so bad. That's something I'm so much against in the system. I think a patient should not suffer. When a patient comes into the hospital with their carers, they are already scared and stressed. So for us as caregivers, we're supposed to overcome that care they have and the stress in addition to being the tools of healing we are of God's healing ministry. So let's not add to the stress of the patient. <laughs> and I can tell you, I have seen it. Hey, shouting at the patient. Why are you shouting at the patient? Leave what you came with from home. Huh? Don't bring it to the hospital and start taking turn off the patient, the bedside and whoever is there. No. Or your colleague even. When you ask for blood from the blood bank, these days, it's become so common. Let me go back a bit. In my time, our classes were graduating here, maybe 50, 55. If you graduate 60, you're men. So for you to be more than one intern in a unit would be Christmas. And that intern ran the grounds of these hospitals. There was no sending quarters. I don't know where it has come from. There was no whatever. We did all the work. So for me, I want you to go out there and work hard. 
don't go out there and start giving yourselves no because we are five interns in the unit a a and b will wait from 08 to 12 the other one will wait from because of what huh? when you have the numbers don't you think you'll be able to churn out the patient faster the outpatient in casualty or uh, uh, filter clinic whatever we call it these days and they will go home and you admit those ones who need to be admitted but when you start saying on your court day you want to rest from morning and they know me i'm waking from that time to that time and unfortunately it goes on even to our registrars you know that is not correct you will find it so overcoming i don't join that because it's this is normal. It's not normal. Okay. So you work like there is no tomorrow and give the best of yourselves to the service. Can you imagine if you are not giving a good service to whatever patient you have, then your parents here, siblings or whatever, are being attended to by a colleague who treats them just like you. We have what we call social medicine. And this is when you have to take your relative around the whole hospital, because if you're not with them, it would be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Just maybe two, three weeks ago, my mother was admitted here, but <laughs> my story is a different thing. But this woman came and was asking for a cashier just to know how much it would be, because she was coming in for surgery, she was coming from Livingstone, so her children wanted her to be admitted in high cost. She had been around the hospital for three hours, she told me. And she happened to walk into my mother's room. And I'm like, no, this is not the reception, but let me take you. So I was walking behind her, and she walks into the nurse's office. And they're like telling her, ah, Pakashia, I think, I think they've knocked off. It's 15 hours. I said, why is your cashier knocked off? No, because in the afternoon, sometimes there's no work. <laughs> Excuse me. So, if I'm supposed to work from 8 to 16, or is it 8 to 17, according to my appointment with the government, new dawn now, why would I want to knock off because there's no work? It doesn't go like that. So, don't think that what you find is normal. It has wrongly become normal. So I actually had to take charge of this woman and told her, no, you go and come back tomorrow. No, it was a Friday. Come back after the holiday. That was one of the October holidays. So that you come and see the cashier who works from here. Because I can assure you, you are going to go around another, I don't know how many times. So let's be there for the patient. Because this is the center of our service. And you don't really know what they are going through. One thing I want to, this does not apply to us here, our lovely system is to have an orientation course for the security people, the, what do you call them? The receptionists, the ladies in the clinics who give out cards, because they have no clue what they are doing right now. They are not oriented to the fact that they're not working in Ministry of Works and Supply, you know, Ministry of Finance, where nobody dies. It's just papers. You know? And they want to treat you and make you annoyed. Ah, okay. You'll see it. <laughs> so, um, let, as you go, just be prepared that you're going to work at a team you're going to be the best of yourselves. Class of 2021 is coming to make a difference. Isn't it? Yes. yes. And I'll still be there to know that you're making a difference. <laughs> and when you get your degrees, there'll be doctors, there'll be uh, farmers and so on. Respect and honor is not earned by the qualification you're going to get. Respect and honor is earned by how you are going to give your service. Mm -hmm. I know there are people who, if you don't add doctor, I have no problem if someone just calls me my name. I was not born with the DR. 
fact, actually. It came quite a little later. Mm -hmm. But I know people who almost throw a fit mm -hmm. because you omitted Dr. So and so. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I work right now, I work for under critical care. I'm administratively in charge of ICU. So we don't wear white coats in there. And the nurses wear scrubs. So I'd be sitting like by the nurse's desk. And people will come and talk to me thinking I'm the, what is it? The people who write in books. Or they come talk to me and think I'm a nurse. And I respond and I talk, even junior doctors. And then, as God always has it, someone walk in and say, oh, Dr. Mulundika. And then it's like, and I'm like, no, it's okay. <laughs> but can you imagine if I'm a rant and a rave and like, hey, why, why do, how can you be asking me that? No, I know what happens in the hospital. So if I can answer that question, I'll answer it. So as um, I said, you've started with God, continue with God. I don't know scriptures, like I can't quote scriptures, but I know that there's a place where it says faith without action is dead. Mm -hmm. So we are leaving this place as faith people. So let us go with the action and give glory to God. Mm -hmm. For having spent this life in this beautiful community, continue with it. And it will surely open more doors. For the calling, for the Monga, talked about um, <laughs> the, the cooperative we belong to. So I think I'd love that when you actually graduate, you need to call a meeting where Father Monga and I can come and talk to you with some other people and direct you early in life what it means to invest. When you've just started work, when you don't have too many responsibilities, it is easier to be able to say, I'll be putting aside 300 kwacha, 500 kwacha in this cooperative and so on, and start whatever cooperative it is. By the time you are 30, 35, you have earned the money to buy or build a house without having to go to the bank. Okay? So it's very important. It's good to have a job, but I also know that somewhere, somewhere it's written that you need to have at least seven sources of income. So at least have two. Start with two and then you can continue and see whether you get anything more. So I'll leave that job to Father Monga and he shall make this meeting possible. So I think those are the words I had for you. I didn't want to do this in the beginning. But some of you do know my son, Edwin Ndaj Mwanda, died in the line of service. So I just want you to stand up for a moment of silence. Thank you. Shall we please give her a round of applause? Jacqueline, thank you very much. <laughs> we receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Are we tired? So let's put in it. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father. 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the good news.
Oh, oh, oh. 